To me, these items aren't just books in the sense of a bound codex containing information. They're artifacts, evidence of human thought and human labor. They're part of a conversation with the past that extends into the present and future. Past users have left their marks on them, so they really give us a sense not only of the time in which they were produced, but also what happened to them in the intervening years. They're in conversation with each other. They inform one another. And just as a book is more than the sum of its parts, so a library is more than the sum of its books. McMaster is proud to be the home of one of Canada's leading public repositories for rare and unique books. I'm Myron Groover, Archives and Rare Books Librarian at McMaster University, and I'm here today to talk to you about some of the amazing items in the Rare Book Library here at the William Reedy Division of Archives and Research Collections. So in front of me here, I have a survey of material from our collections, just to give you a little bit of a sense of the richness of our holdings and what we have here. In front of me is a very, very famous book, usually known as the Kelmscott Chaucer. This is the masterpiece of William Morris's Kelmscott Press. This was produced uh, almost immediately before Morris's own death, uh, and it's regarded as one of the most beautiful books ever made. This copy is particularly special because this has um, a white alum tod pigskin binding decorated with a design made by Morris himself, and only 50 copies were ever printed with this binding, and we're very proud to have one of them here. Here we have another very famous book. This is a first edition of Samuel Johnson's Dictionary of the English Language. So this is the first true dictionary of English. Uh, previous dictionaries had tended to be more like lexicons or lists of words. Uh, this one is a very deep dive into the etymology of various parts of speech. Uh, it's also a lot of fun to read in addition to being a historically significant artifact because uh, Samuel Johnson had a particular sense of humor and he was not above including his own jokes and opinions in the definitions that he writes. On this side, I have a complete 11 volume set of a work usually just known as the Picard. This is the world's first recognizable work of comparative religion. The authors treat all religions as worthy of respect, as seeking to answer the same basic questions about humanity's place in the universe. Uh, in the early 18th century, this was a, a revolutionary approach, particularly in a continent which had been uh, riven by centuries of, of violent religious conflict. The authors themselves were fleeing religious persecution, um, and so they set up shop in the Low Countries, which is where these volumes were produced. Here we have a almost a stereotypical rare book, that is to say a medieval manuscript. It's a medieval book of hours, so this is a devotional work which would have been owned by a wealthy woman. Uh, and it's a very beautiful object because it's not only a devotional work or a religious work, it's also an object of conspicuous consumption. Books like this were expensive to produce. Carrying one around casually in public was a way of showing that not only are you devout, you're wealthy as well. This item here is a little bit of a CanCon tie-in. This is something that we acquired a couple of years ago. It's one of the only copies in the world outside of Europe. It's an Austrian book by a very famous gardener from the city of Vienna in the early 19th century. And it's a book about the ornamental uses of maple trees in gardening. Uh, and what makes this book particularly special is this series of beautiful hand-painted copper plate engravings depicting various species of maple tree. This here is a historical and geographical survey of the Low Countries, so the countries that today would be the Netherlands and Belgium. It's really an interesting work because it was produced during a particular time period between two calamities that befell the city. Uh, so it attests to a very particular moment in the history of Antwerp in particular, but of the Low Countries more generally. Again, a very recent acquisition. That's something we just got last year. Here we have another manuscript. Whereas the Book of Hours is very much a medieval work, this book is looking more to the early modern period. It's much more legible. It's in a beautiful humanist minuscule hand. It's a book that's designed to be read. This is actually a monastic rule from a nunnery near Rome. It's written in Italian, and it gives the rules by which the sisters are supposed to live in this intentional community. Rare books are always produced using the materials available. This is a Southeast Asian manuscript, and a material that's very abundant in Southeast Asia is palm leaves. So this is a palm leaf manuscript. This is a Buddhist scripture. This format of books is iconically associated with uh, Buddhist and Hindu religious texts, and these are produced to this day all over Southeast Asia. And last, but by no means least, this is a first edition of Galileo's Dialogue. 
a book that literally changed the world. This is the book that famously had Galileo placed under house arrest for the rest of his life. It was seen as insulting to the church and to the Pope in particular, and Galileo was found to be vehemently suspect of heresy. He spent the rest of his life under house arrest. This is just a few items. I have, what, a half dozen things in front of me of the 100,000 items in our collection. The best way to get a sense of what we have here is to come in to experience it for yourself. Again, I want to stress, we are proudly open to the public. We're delighted to share these books with you both in our space and online. Please feel welcome to visit and make use of this resource, which is, in my opinion, one of the most amazing things on campus.